So uh, first of all, I wanted to say it was lovely to sit with all of you. It was a beautiful, deep field experience. And one of the interesting things I've noticed, and I imagine you have too, is um, sitting in a group, there's a, a shared field experience. And interestingly, it happens online as well. It's a little, maybe a little harder to sense and detect, but um, it's there. And it's lovely to, to share in that with you. So I wanted to begin my talk with a question for each of you. Uh, it's an experiential question, not an intellectual one, which is where does your attention tend to localize in your body? And, and more specifically, where do you notice it localizing right now? For most people, mm -hmm. the tendency is to localize here in the forehead, um, which is totally understandable. Um, our, some major sensory organs, our eyes, our ears, our nose, mouth are in the head, mm -hmm. and not to mention the prefrontal cortex um, being quite engaged in analytic thought. And this it can be true even for experienced meditators, such as ourselves. Um, we may have a more quiet mind, more spacious mind, but there still may be a tendency for attention to localize um, in the forehead. And uh, it seems culturally true that uh, most people live from their necks up unknowingly. And generally are much less aware of what's happening below the neck and in the body. And this has been an area of special interest for me. Not that I was particularly sensitive that way, but it became clear to me in my own journey of unfolding awareness um, that the sensitivity of the body uh, is a wonderful um, resource and adjunct uh, in the spiritual path, and often neglected and undervalued. So what I wanted to talk about um, is um, the sensitivity of the body, um, the relevance of that sensitivity, what obstructs it, what helps develop it, um, and how it has both practical and um, essential uh, applications and ramifications. So, so this talk is, I would call, if I had to give it a name, the sense of inner knowing. And it really came out of my experience working as a, as a young therapist, as I would sit with people. Um, I began to notice this kind of unusual phenomena that had not been described in any of the textbooks that I had read as a student, and which was that as people relaxed and began to open up um, and get in touch with themselves, um, get in touch with their bodies, get in touch with their feelings, get in touch with their inner experience, um, their deeper thoughts and feelings, um, as they became more authentic in their self-experience and self-expression, interesting subtle shifts would happen in their bodies, sometimes in their posture, that was interesting, sometimes in their breath, um, but often, um, and, and I began to notice and, and feel these within myself that as we get in touch with a deeper truth, whether that's personal or transpersonal, um, the body responds 
particularly as the body is less burdened by conditioning. I mean, many of us are not in touch with our bodies, and so this may not be as obvious uh, a process. But what was interesting is one thing I noticed is people began to actually sit upright, you know, instead of slouching, not in a rigid way, but it was almost like starting to come into alignment with some something internal that felt true something authentic an internal sense of congruence um, like bodies would start people's bodies would start to line up quite in a relaxed way in a natural way they would start lighting up uh, people would feel kind of an inner sense of lightness and aliveness and that would be in the field and felt there would be a sense of more openness, um, a sense of more space uh, around and with one's experience. Um, and often a growing kind of warmth and openness in the heart area, um, more compassion, more kindness. These would be the feelings that would accompany the subtle sensations. So I, I didn't know what to call this. I thought it was very interesting. I thought it was important uh, because regardless of what the mind was doing, the body was doing something else in response to getting in touch with uh, a deeper truth and authenticity um, within ourselves. I, I started writing, trying to write about it, write a book, and finally I, I realized I wasn't clear on what my subject was until the phrase, the sense of inner knowing arose. And that would have been my preference, actually, for the subtitle of my book, In Touch, The Sense of Inner Knowing. And it was very interesting that as we get more in touch with a sense of knowing on whatever level, um, the body begins to respond. And mm, I could help people sense this, and people could often feel it themselves. And and I imagine many of you have some familiarity with this. Um, to, I mean, for some of you, it may be an unfamiliar concept. For some of you, it may be peripherally familiar. And some of you it may be very familiar. Um, one way it's been talked about is in terms of felt sensing, uh, a whole body sense of something. And this is a term that was um, originated um, by Eugene Genlin, a student of um, the American psychologist Carl Rogers, um, to describe this kind of some sense, feeling sense that the body had prior to thought of a situation or a person um, or an issue. So I think we've all had experiences of that. Sometimes we walk into a room and we just have a kind of general sense of that room, that space, we may, uh, whether there are people there or not, we have a feeling of that when we meet people, uh, maybe people we know or people we don't know, just a kind of more intuitive, direct sense of how someone is or, or how we are in relationship to that person. So this is really about felt sensing, um, but what I would call a kind of a far reach of felt sensing, a further extension of felt sensing to a sense of inner knowing. Um, so it's a form of listening, really. Uh, listening, of course, not just with the ears, uh, but listening with the whole body. And certainly could fall within the rubric of mindfulness. Um, being mindful, that is to say, being attentive of subtle body sensation. So this is something that we all have. Um, uh, that most of us, that's dormant, actually, in most of us, um, that generally requires some uh, recognition of consciously and attention to uh, in order for it to come into conscious awareness. Um, not necessarily a lot of effort, but more of an understanding and openness. It's like we start noticing um, the interior of our body. And so that means like attention starts shifting down from our normal 
headquarters, if you don't mind the pun, uh, down into um, the heart area and down into the belly. And certainly you're all familiar with Buddhist practices, you know, for developing loving kindness and compassion, uh, and also practices in terms of being more aware of the hara or, or the belly. Um, so all of these are in that direction of cultivating uh, more intimate contact and attention with the deep interiority of the body. So what's fascinating to me, um, then I'll, I'll kind of get to why this is important in terms of spiritual practice um, more clearly, and maybe it'll be obvious as I do, is just how open the body is in its natural state. Certainly when we've gone through a lot of difficult conditioning, we tense up on various levels, both on a muscular level and on level of the organs and tissues and cells, but also internally, we tend to clench and clutch, don't we? We tighten up inside. It's a way to protect ourselves um, and attention tends to go up. Uh, and go into a scanning or hypervigilant mode. So as we feel more relaxed, as we feel more attuned, attention actually drops down into the core of the body. And what we discover is the body is not as solid an object as we normally take it to be. It's actually, with eyes closed, it's a field of sensation, isn't it? Like we lose the outline visually. And we may even let go of the image of the body. And now it's just, it's a field of sensation. And as we breathe and as we open to the body, we begin to notice it shifts, subtle shifts, subtle openings. As we get more in touch with our experience, um, it begins to open up. Now, a lot of people uh, are afraid, actually, of uh, relaxing into the body because we, we have stored a lot of conditioning there. And um, it can be a process of um, acclimating to difficult feelings that we pushed away or unpleasant sensations. Um, often that does arise as we become more intimate with the body. But also what happens is the body begins to feel more like a field of energy. Uh, we, we feel it more um, translucent. Uh, more energetic. And in an interesting way, as we get more in touch with our true nature, who we are fundamentally prior to any story and any sensation, our body responds to that um, in the ways that I was describing earlier. So I want to say a little bit more uh, about what some of those ways are. Um, and you may be more familiar with some of the, you may be familiar with none of these. You may be familiar with a few of them, or you may be familiar with all of them. We're all wired differently and we all have different degrees of sensitivity. But as we deepen in self-intimacy, as we in a way get closer to our experience and open to it with curiosity and affection, um, and as it unfolds, there's a kind of melting experience. Um, I imagine many of you have experienced that if you've been on a long meditation course or been in therapy or done some kind of inquiry, that if you stay with your experience, it begins to unfold, it begins to kind of melt and open up. And, and so, as I was saying, often the heart area begins to come alive. There's a sense of greater warmth and openness, and we feel... We don't have to work at cultivating loving kindness so much. Actually, it begins to feel like it radiates out. Um, we're more in touch with a sense of gratitude and appreciation. Um, there is a sense of being less um, contained by the body. The body itself begins to feel more fluid and energetic, and we begin to feel a sense of more space. Um, and imagine, again, in deep meditations, many of you have experienced this sense of spaciousness. Sometimes the sense of the body may dissolve entirely. 
Um, sometimes it can just feel very light and spacious and we feel ourselves more expanded, um, more of a spacious awareness. Um, also, there's a, there's a settling, a kind of a ah, sense of relief um, as we get more in touch with ourselves. Um, there's a, a release of tension and attention naturally begins to settle down and we feel more grounded. Uh, we feel more at ease internally. We feel more at ease to be here in our body and a sense of deeper groundedness, um, connection with our bodies and with the earth and, and um, a deeper ground still uh, will begin to emerge. Um, and as I said earlier, sense of alignment, an internal sense of congruence as well. Um, that is accompanied with a sense of aliveness, like we're, we're touching into um, an essential quality of aliveness. So this gives us, the, the value of this is, it's much more trustworthy than our thinking. Like our thinking is very tricky, uh, if you've noticed. Uh, you know, we can, we can um, talk ourselves out of our experience very easily. We can devalue it. We can uh, be suspicious of it, um, discount it in various ways. I notice this in my work with people, in my mentoring practice. People will have a genuine insight and they'll say, well, you know, this is such a cliche, or maybe I'm just making this up. But if they notice what's going, if you notice what's going on in your body, if there's a sense of opening or lightness or settling or groundedness, or um, this gives a very direct feedback about the authenticity of the unfolding insight. Does that make sense? Just wondering if you can relate to what I'm talking about. Um, it's like the body is a very sensitive instrument. And so it, we have a sense of authenticity, both within ourself and interpersonally with others, right? We can have a feel when someone is actually, I mean, some people are very good liars and they can trick a lot of people, but generally we have a sense when someone is being authentic on a personal level or on a, on a very deep uh, spiritual level, whether they're really speaking um, from their own experience, if they're really in touch with themselves. Um, and it's a, it's a direct and intuitive sense. All of this is kind of mediated through this subtle sensitivity of the body and gives us a sense of whether we're on track or off track in terms of our, our spiritual unfolding and, and our, our inner growth as well. I, I find it a really helpful um, tool or instrument uh, to, of inner guidance. There was some type, the joke is, you know, we've been born in a human body without a manual, <laughs> an operation manual. And there's, there's some truth to that. But, in, but a deeper truth actually is we do have a, a subtle sensing, kind of a subtle GPS, inner GPS, um, that uh, includes this subtle sensitivity of the body. So it's there, um, often dormant, uh, sometimes quite lively and awake, uh, depending both on our temperament and our conditioning. But conditioning is a very important point. And so I wanna talk a little bit about uh, what obstructs this sensitivity. Um, and I can only um, talk about this um, in a kind of general way. But one is just neglect. I mean, this is not taught in school, is it? Did you ever take a class on <laughs> what I'm talking about? I never did. You know, I mean, there, of course, uh, general education just does not talk about the wisdom of the body and this kind of whole body listening. You know, so much of education is about analysis and problem solving and gathering information and very little about uh, feeling and sensing. So I think in indigenous cultures, this is more kind of intuitively prized and recognized. Uh, when we're closer to nature, when we're in smaller groups of people, this is in the more foreground of attention. But as we've become increasingly educated and, and denatured and out of touch with nature, um, this 
sensitivity, natural sensitivity, tends to fall more into the background. So if we spend more time in nature, spend more time with loved ones who are attuned, this comes more into the foreground of awareness. So neglect, cultural neglect, just a lack of recognition that this natural sensitivity is here. There can also be shame. As children, we're very sensitive. We are like sponges. We pick up a lot in our environment and we don't censor very much our experience. And so we can blurt out uncomfortable truths that are not welcomed in the family of origin and then be you know, chastised and shamed and humiliated um, when uncomfortable truths get expressed. So uh, we may be body shamed. We may be shamed about our feelings. Um, basically, uh, the message is don't feel that and certainly don't express it. And another is fear, um, because, you know, some people to to begin to open in this way into their their deep interiority feels like they're opening a can of worms, right? It's like, no, I don't want to go there. You know, I've experienced a lot of pain, a lot of wounding. I need to, you know, survive and get on with my life. And And if I open to this, I am going to be lost. You know, I'll be lost in my grief or lost in my rage or lost in my shame or lost in my terror. And better to keep a safe distance from all of that. Um, one should not be so vulnerable and so open. So maybe you can, you know, relate to some of these various conditions that tend to um, impede um, this, this natural sensitivity. So it's understandable that um, this is not so well developed. So the last thing I want to say is, so, so having this inner guidance system, uh, kind of getting, beginning to trust it, beginning to attune is valuable in pragmatic ways. It helps with kind of sensing what's happening in the room, what's happening here, how am I feeling, what's going on interpersonally, it helps us when we're trying to solve a dilemma to get quiet and kind of listen to what a natural inclination may be uh, and to learn to kind of trust and follow that. But, and not but, but and as I was suggesting, uh, it really assists this, um, the essential goal, I would say, of meditation and of spiritual practice, which is to get in touch with our true nature um to to recognize uh who we are fundamentally and this sensitivity is a beautiful guide um, in developing that trust in feeling a sense of being on track or off track and being resonant or dissonant with that so it's um it's a form of mindfulness i would say um, more body-based more subtle and sensitive um, but certainly um, of great relevance um, in both practically and spiritually speaking. So that's as much as I want to say as a kind of overview, and we can open it up to, to questions. And next week, I want to um, kind of link this sensitivity to a process of uh, inquiry um, in terms of recognizing and deconstructing um, core limiting beliefs and also sitting with an essential question. So we'll continue with um, some practical applications of this deep listening. So what I want to do now is uh, open it up to questions, but I want to check the chat questions and see um, what kind of questions are coming up and maybe address. A lot of people are saying yes, makes sense. I'm just reading through comments now. 
a lot of people chiming in. Ah, so here's a question. Um, is it possible to be overly aware of your body? Hmm. I suppose it depends what we mean by overly aware. Um, one could fixate um, on physical sensations or even subtle sensations. And any kind of fixation is a problem, um, just as fixating on thoughts or fixating on emotions is. Yes, fixating on sensations. We could get, we could get too fascinated <laughs> with the body. We could get too fixated on subtle experience and subtle energies. And then that actually becomes a kind of obstacle. Um, so um, I think the point here is not, is not to fixate but actually to expand and include sensitivity and awareness um, so that it becomes um, increasingly multidimensional. Um, we, we, as I was suggesting, we all have this um, to some degree, um, and it's a matter of paying attention. Um, I think it's also true it may be true at times, and some of you long-term meditators and been on long meditation courses know every once in a while, some, something gets flushed out and it can be very overwhelming. Um, and uh, that can be true with body sensing as well, but generally it's a wave. And, and if we um, you know, stay grounded and resourced, then, then we can integrate it. So, um, <laughs> anyway, that's my response. Why don't we take a question? We've got some hands up, virtual hands. I think you know how to do that if you go to the to lift your virtual hand. Um, if you go to the reactions button at the bottom of your page, you can tap on uh, your virtual hand. But let's, um, James, if you want to unmute yourself, uh, we can chat. Or if James can be unmuted. Ah, so you still need to be unmuted if you can do it yourself or how's that? I think that worked. Yeah, that works. Good. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you for this talk. This is, this is something that I've felt personally. Um, so it's very nice to have confirmation of something outside of myself with it. There's one thing that you mentioned that was really interesting to me uh, was this uh, shared experience. And I felt that walking into places before, and I, and I have felt that on this video as well as the last time I joined it. And I didn't really know what to make of that because it was quite an interesting experience and sometimes coming with colors and images and things like that too. Uh, I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's it is a it is a very interesting phenomena. Uh, we are not as separate as we imagine, you know. And um, we have these various levels of sensitivity and and intersensitivity. Um, you know, we, we certainly a very strong teaching is about our interconnectedness. And this is a visceral um, experience of that. We share um, on many levels unconsciously as well as consciously. And the conscious part is probably the minority actually of what's being shared in what I would call the, the field. Um, and the field, like for instance, this group, we've got looks like 300 and some people around the world, you know, and yet, there is something shared here, which is very interesting. Like, how does that work? You know, that, that this can be shared uh, at such a distance. Um, some of us can feel it, some of us can. I used to not feel it, now I do. Um, so at the deepest level, I would say we share our beingness. We share our awareness. And the more 
intimate we are in our self-experience, um, the more open we are to the shared field. Um, and the whole body can feel it and the heart feels it particularly as love. You know, this, this sense of profound connection, not only with one another as human beings, but with all beings, right? So you can feel it now. <laughs> I sense, sense you're kind of attuning with this, you know? And of course we can feel a lot of other things too. We can feel a tone, an emotional tone um, in the room, in a group of a person uh, as well. So we're like this, I, I think of the body as a kind of resonating instrument. Generally, these instruments are not very well tuned. You know, they're rather out of tune. And so, um, you know, the resonance is kind of shaky and partial. But as the body becomes more attuned, and it becomes attuned actually by listening and paying attention, uh, it becomes more fine in its capacity to resonate accurately with what's happening and to share uh, experience as well. So this is very interesting phenomena, you know, this phenomena of resonance, this ph phenomena of transmission, this phenomena of sensitivity of the shared field. And it's, um, it's natural. Thank you. I appreciate you answering the question. You're welcome. Very helpful. Yeah, good. So maybe Farah? Hi, uh, thank you so much for the uh, guided meditation as well as the talk. Um, I have a, a problem connecting with my body because of the past trauma that I have. You know, head above, I, I feel great, right? I've been meditating for 20 years, so I feel space, I feel oneness, I feel wholeness. But by the time I come to my body, I lost everything. Yes. A lot of pain is a lot of suffering is a lot of uh, emotions that has been stored. And yeah. I've been working on my body for a while, we, you know, with the massage and, you know, uh, therapy. And I've done everything that I know uh, with my body. But it seems that there is certain things stuck into it. Yeah. Because of the uh, maybe severity of the trauma. I don't know, whatever it is. How can I go beyond that? Wow. If I want to get into the body and uh, how I can move forward with that? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. beautiful question, an important one. And I think something many people experience, particularly who've been exposed to trauma, you know, is basically, as I was saying before, it's unsafe to kind of inhabit the body. It's much safer to be up here. And we can experience spacious, peaceful awareness um, Sometimes, you know, but being human beings and in being in relationship, we get, you know, triggered. And uh, so uh, first, great that you're attending to your body um, in various ways. Um, it's good when you're working with a therapist or a counselor, um, if they have a somatic orientation, if they actually have some sensitivity themselves and some understanding of how the body holds tension and trauma and how to resource oneself skillfully uh, and gradually release it. And there are various schools, you know, trainings that um, people can take that um, certifications that help them in that sensitivity. Um, I think, so that's a more general answer and then more, more specific. Uh, and, and sometimes it really does the need, require the help of another. You know, we really need, because often trauma is in relationship, you know, and, and it, it can be difficult to let someone close. It's to have someone who's safe and attuned, you know, it's really helpful to help hold space, hold feeling, help regulate, co-regulate the system. So that can be an important resource. In terms of working with it oneself, first of all, your, your dedication is beautiful like that desire, that intention touches me. You know, I, I feel the, the depth of that. Thank you. So, so that's important too. You know, it's like you do, this is something you want to include too in your experience. That's important. Um, 
And the other is maybe to ask yourself, what area is most important to attend to first? Like it might be the area of the heart or the belly or throat or you ask yourself, you don't need to answer here. It's just a kind of a question. No, I did. I had a lot of sensitivity on my throat. So I work a lot with the throat. But then I uh, have a guidance within that I have to first focus on the heart. Yes, there you go. And I noticed that there's a lot of resistance with accepting love, accepting yes. uh, connectivity. Yeah. Uh, but still, uh, no matter how much I <laughs> work, it, is that blockage still there? Right, right. I understand. So um, the, the other way, uh, something I found to be helpful is we start from a sense of spaciousness, from a sense of either present centeredness or a sense of presence. In other words, we don't go into it with an agenda to fix it or change it. Mm. Okay because already we're kind of in, getting in an adversarial position uh, or relationship with that conditioned aspect of self. And often that will engender resistance. So if you come in from a sense of spaciousness, curiosity and affection, just wanting to get to know it better, not trying to change it, not trying to get rid of it, just like, I want to know you better. I would like to know you better and just, in a state of receptivity and listening, a very slow, it, when that's a genuine intention, a very slow unfolding, or sometimes rapid, but often slow unfolding will begin to happen uh, with that spirit of welcoming without trying to change or manipulate our experience. And these tender aspects of self will feel safe enough to begin to um, reveal their experience. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's a basic approach one of real kindness curiosity affection without trying to change our experience thank you very helpful i appreciate you're it. welcome you're very welcome thank you i appreciate it okay let's talk with elaine okay. thank you so much john um i can't and see I, I see somebody else yeah it, it it's my laptop if i turn it on my laptop's gonna okay go that's off. fine so we'll just talk we'll um talk. Yeah. So, and this, I think somebody else just put a similar question in. So I've, I've been on retreats and as the retreat goes, even silent retreats, you find that you don't even need to verbalize. Correct. And it's hopefully a safe space and you relax and you relax more and more. And, and for me, I can become just more sensitive, more sensitive to what's going on inside. Yes, that's right. But also, like there's a permeability, right? So not only sensitive inside, but more sensitive to the outside. Correct. Now that's great if you're in a safe environment, a protected environment. Mm -hmm. And what would happen to me, and it's been a long time since I've gone on a retreat, but what would happen to me is I would sort of leave with this open heart, open pores, open being, and feel smacked, <laughs> you know, to, like walking in the middle of New York traffic or something, you know? Uh, yes, yeah. Right, so, so yes, great, more sensitivity, more openness to what's going on inside, more sensitivity to others, but how do you not get smacked <laughs> by what is going on outside and with other people? Yeah. And, it, and, it, and not lose the sensitivity, but That's just right, like, not shut down. Uh, so quickly, two things I would say. One is, um, this is why, uh, you know, both love and wisdom are important, uh, kindness and clarity. Uh, so it's important to be discerning. And, and our sensitivity is part of that, uh, you know, discerning what feels in balance or appropriate um, and, and being able to modulate our experience uh, accordingly. And that's kind of a skill to develop. The other thing is groundedness. Uh, it's great to be, you know, sensitive and open, but we need, we need a sense of, and it's related to discernment, but it has an independent quality, uh, a sense of the ground. And I find um, in my work with people, people who are very sensitive, um, 
that very often our attention needs to go to um, to a, a sense of the ground of really feeling rooted uh, in in something deeper and that provides a stability uh, so that one um, I'm a sensitive person and you know sometimes I I do get a bit overwhelmed, uh, particularly, you know, with the suffering in the world. Um, mm -hmm. I, I recall I was leading a workshop on the East Coast at Kripalu, and one of the retreatants came in in the middle, and, and um, he had been a school principal in Nashville, mm -hmm. and uh, there had been that school shooting, mm -hmm. uh, and his, his kids were friends with the kids in that school, and he knew the principal, and, you know, he was in shock, and and relayed his experience and I felt the shock, you know, and it was, it was hard, you know, it was with me for several hours and I just had to metabolize it. But I know that, I mean, it, to be a sensitive person in this world is challenging, but having that sense of ground um, is very important. And that's a whole nother conversation about what that involves. But it's yeah, it yeah, if I may, just, just to add something, uh, a, a wonderful Thai teacher said, he'd watch all of us at the beginning doing all these fancy things, and he said, remember, relax, breathe, feel the earth, do yeah. nothing extra. Yeah, that's nice. You know, feel the earth. Um, feel the, feel the earth, and the do nothing extra is also really mm. hard and important. Yeah, these but are these simple, Eastern traditions yeah, simple. are more, more like feel your feet that's it no, feel and, and feet. feel what's beneath your feet you know it's yeah. like our feet the bottoms of our feet are very sensitive and there's a whole underground dimension of sensitivity uh, that kind of deeply subtle deeply grounded most of us are unaware of how ungrounded we are and and that's a very deep exploration so thank you yeah thank you maybe very quickly what, one more question i'll just have a minute or so rachel Hi, yeah, thank you so much for your talk and I appreciate you taking my uh, question. So some of this that you're discussing sounds to me like you're describing an empath type of person. And do you have any comments specifically about empath or well, that was my question. What do you think well, about that? I think, I think we are all capable. Um, I mean, you know, an empath, someone who's highly empathic could probably relate very easily to what I'm talking about, but I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about a, a native quality of felt sensing and empathy that we all have. Um, so, so well, when you when you talked about how this man came to you and you felt, you know, his shock in your body, yeah, you know, that seems pretty empathic to me. Yeah, it um, was. No, I'm I'm very I'm very empathic, but I don't think of myself as an empath. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, there, but go ahead. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's sort of like that other lady's question, you know, you know, how do you sort of live in the world being, you know, sensitive and an empath like that, but yet, you know, you can't take in all the energy all the time. So no, you anyway. can't. And that's not the point. You would be overwhelmed, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. so that's where clarity is very important. And and a sense of deep kind of interiority in the body and a deep sense of ground. That gives a sense of balance. So mm -hmm. and and it, it modulates permeability so you're not overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, in a way, what's one thing, some people ask me, well, you know, when you work with people, you know, intimately, don't you get, you know, don't you take it on? And uh, actually, maybe a little bit, uh, but mostly not. And the feeling is actually being almost like an open window. And mm -hmm. things just move through, they're felt, but they're not fixated upon. Mm -hmm. They're not taken in. Um, mm -hmm. it, there's not generally, I, I can't say always, but largely there's not a reaction uh, mm -hmm. to what's happening. So uh, another point is, as we discover our spacious nature, you know, a greater sense of spacious awareness, uh, there's a greater context within which our sensitivity is seated. And mm -hmm. that uh, offers a natural kind of stabilization too. Yeah, well, that that's good to know because um, because I've had a similar experience, <laughs> so so that's good. All okay. right, well, good. Yeah, I appreciate much. it. Uh -huh. oh, okay, well, we are um, we are at the half hour. We're at seven thirty.
So this has been fun. I like the, actually, I like the interaction directly with people. It's more, feels more intimate and alive than a, a general question. So we can do more of this next week. Um, I, as I said, I want to introduce another facet in terms of um, inquiry.